Today, I'm gonna show you how the screws are made that hold human beings together. <laughs> Phone screws need to be made perfectly, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through all the unique things I did to make a completely burr-free bone screw. And I'm gonna show you a thread process you may have never seen before. It's called thread whirling, and it's a process that's necessary to create the unique geometries that's on these bone screws. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how I wound up with seven of these in my shoulder. It's kind of embarrassing. You might wanna to listen to the story. Now normally bone screws are made out of some sort of surgical stainless steel or titanium, but so you could actually watch the part run, we ran a part out of brass. So going into the process here, you can see that the first thing I did is I came in and I turned the part. Now normally your whirling tool is capable of making the threads without pre-turning, but my inserts were just a little bit under what was required for this bone screw. Next I came in with the Ketametal Harvey end mill and did the starting notches. I then came in and thread whirled it. We got our ring and our inserts from PH Horn. They make an unbelievably good thread whirling insert. The angle they gave me and the speeds and feeds they gave me were pretty much first try. After that, I come in again with the milling tool and the thread roller to ensure there's no burrs on my part. It's super important we don't have burrs on these parts because if anything breaks off that part and goes into your bloodstream, you're gonna have a bigger problem than a broken bone. After that, I continue on by making the bone screw in sections to the end of the part. If you're trying to get into the medical field, I would strongly recommend the Tornos DT26. Honestly, I think this is the best bang for your buck to have thread rolling capabilities and B axis capabilities in one machine. Not a lot of other machine tool builders actually offer that. Usually you have to have like a turret and a separate gang with the B-axis to do all this work in one. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. In the future, we're gonna have a B-axis thread whirler, so make sure you keep an eye out for that because you definitely don't want to miss it. After that, it's pretty simple. I just cut off and transfer over to the sub spindle. Now the first thing I do is I drill for the hexalome, face off the part, put the radius of the part on there, and then chamfer the hole for the hexalome. Now after that, we have to mill our hexalome. We need a one millimeter end mill, which is super tiny, but using this high frequency air spindle made it really easy because at 80,000 RPM, I have almost no tool pressure. It allowed me to go 20 inches a minute, and I'm sure you could tell from the footage, this thing was flying when it cut through that hexalome. So if you're gonna do small milling like this, I highly recommend an air spindle like that. And then after that, all it does is eject the part, and they come out through this tray right here, and look at that. You got yourself some bone screws. Now we just need to find someone to test them out on. Barry. Ooh, sparkly. One more thing about thread whirling that I want to talk about is you really need to flush the chips out. You need a coolant line like this in there blasting all those chips out because of the centrifugal force of this holder, the chips will stay in there. So you really need to flush it out to extend the tool life of your thread whirler. Now there's a lot that goes into thread whirling, but in reality, it is the easiest way to create such a perfect thread. There's a few things that matter here. You have the angle of your thread whirler, which has to be calculated, and you have the custom form of your insert that has to be made for whatever bone screw it is you're doing. So let's take this thing apart. I want to show you how this works. All right, so, so this right here is one of six custom inserts that I took out of my thread whirling ring. Now each one of these inserts has to be made specifically for whatever thread it is you're working on. And I want to show you that more in depth, so let's go into the quality office and see how it works. Oh! Why can't I get these transitions right? All right, now we're in the quality office. So if you look at the shadow graph here, I laid out one of the inserts for you guys. And right here, you can actually see the profile of the thread we're making. So if I hold up a screw to it, you can actually see roughly how this is formed. All right, now you might be noticing that the profile doesn't fit exactly, and that's because my thread roller is kicked at an angle. It runs at the angle that's in line with the threads to make the form required. So now one more thing before we get back to the machine. I'm gonna put the bone screw on the shadow graph for you guys and show you how well it all blended together. I wanna to give TMS a huge shout out for the titanium for this job and Hardinch for the work holding for this job. 
With those two things, I was able to get no blemishes on my part. And that's pretty impressive because I do this in sections, which means from right here to right here is the first section, right here to right here is the second section, and right here to right here is the third section. You can't see any blemishes on this, so good job, guys. Your products rule. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys on the Shadow Graph. Now, let's go back to the machine. All right, now for the story about how I wound up with seven of these in my shoulder. It's pretty stupid. I used to use one of these to get around a lot when I was in my early 20s because I was a total hipster. And I decided after a long day of skating, it'd be a good idea to start doing tricks. So I did a nollie shove it and I tried to land with my feet crossed because that's cool to me, I guess. And my back foot wound up landing on the back wheel and it instantly just tripped me up and I pendulumed right to the ground in front of all my friends and snapped my collarbone like a twig. What really sucked about it was my dad had left for two weeks and left me in charge of the company that night. So for two weeks, I had to work with my arm in a sling on Swiss machines. It was an awful experience. But I wound up with seven screws in my shoulder and now I feel a little bit like Iron Man, you know, rebuilt. Yeah, let's drill some holes in some bones. Oh, safety first. Oh. Okay, that is grosser than I thought it'd be. All right, now to put in the screw. How scary of a thought is it, me being a doctor? Oh yeah, that did not go in anywhere near as easy as I thought. Well, that's what you get for having United Healthcare. <laughs> All right, let's increase the torque on this bad boy. Up to three. And <laughs> there you go. Just like in the hospital, that is bone right there. In case you're wondering where this bone came from, well, all I'm willing to tell you is that we now have an opening in our mill department, so. Oh, God, that's disgusting. Ugh. I have seven screws in my shoulder. It is disgusting to think that that's what happened to me. And I will say this, getting these things put in you sucks. You don't want to experience it. All right, let's add a couple more though. I want to get good at this, you know? Oh, dude, it smells like, oh. The bone screws threads vary wildly, depending on whether or not they're going through dense bone, mushy bone, or if they're holding some sort of device into your body. So don't just think this is what bone screws look like. If you Google image it, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're crazy how many different types there are. What is this? Hello? What? You're telling me this guy doesn't have the money for his down payment on a surgery? What a fool. Looks like we're gonna have to take the screws out. Look guys, if you don't wanna wind up like this dude right here, you need to get on CNC Expert right now and check out our new platform. It's a great way for you to showcase your skills to the whole world to get that next level job so you don't have to wind up having bone screws taken out. You wouldn't want that, would you? Get on CNC Expert right now and check it out. All right, that is it for our video today. I hope you guys like it. We had a bunch of fun making it. If you haven't already, hit like and subscribe because we put a bunch of work into these YouTube videos for you guys. And also, don't be stupid. Ring that notifications bell. See you guys. Start whirling. We're whirling like a white water whale. Lots of whirling. I wonder if I can actually get one to go in without drilling a hole for Oh, that smells so disgusting, dude. Oh my God. That is the smell of burning bone. That is what that is. Oh, oh so gross.